Hello everyone. So today I'll be talking about provisions related to startups that are there in the amended patent rules. So new provisions were added in relation to startups and they were given some facilities under the patent rules so as to expedite their patent applications and uh, this was introduced in the amendments of uh, 2016. So I'll be talking about those provisions uh, which basically provide for expedited examination for startups and also there have been some recent amendments wherein expedited examination has also been extended to other entities so I'll also briefly talk about those so coming to the provisions that pertain to startups in the patent rules rule 2 sub rule FB defines startup as any Indian entity which has been recognized by a competent authority under the startup India initiative so there was a startup India initiative initiated by the government of India and uh, therein startup has been defined so so any entity which has been recognized as as a startup would be covered under the amendment provisions of the patent rules so as of now the competent authority to recognize startups is the DPIIT and uh, that is what is being referred to in the provision amended rules also extend the benefits available to foreign startups so any foreign entity that satisfies the criteria of incorporation and turnover that has been defined for Indian startups would also qualify as a startup under the new patent rules so coming to what is the eligibility criteria for being identified as a startup under the startup India initiative any entity which has a period of existence and operation not exceeding 10 years from the date of incorporation would be considered as a startup and also it has to be a private limited company or maybe an LLP or a registered partnership firm in addition the annual turnover of that entity should not exceed INR 100 crores in each financial year since incorporation the entity should have been newly formed and not formed by splitting previously existing entities and it should be working on improving product process service in addition the entity should have a scalable business model so any entity that qualifies all these uh, criteria would be considered as a startup under the startup India initiative and the DPIIT would recognize that entity as a startup and make them eligible to apply for the benefits that are available and under the amended patent rules so let us now see what are the benefits available to startups under the amended patent rules uh, first of all for claiming the benefits of a startup status what you need to do is that you file a declaration under form 28 along with the patent application and along with form 28 you need to file a certificate of recognition as startup that is issued by a DPIIT if it Indian entity is applying for for the patent application in the event there, there is a foreign entity uh, which wants to be identified as a startup and claim the benefits that are available under the amended patent rules they need to submit any document that substantiates the pre prescribed criteria so maybe if there is some document somewhat like the startup recognition certificate issued by the DPIIT IIT that may have been issued by their respective government they can present those documents or maybe some other document that in a way substantiates that this entity qualifies as a startup so the first benefit that is available to startups is that the applicable official fee for them is same as that for a natural person and if you'll see schedule 1 table 1 you'll see that the fees for startups is same as that for an individual or a, or a natural person in addition, startups can apply for an expeditious examination of their patent applications. This is provided under Rule 24C of the patent rules, uh, which provides for a request for expedited examination. You file uh, this request within 48 months from the, the priority date or from the filing date, whichever is earlier. This request is filed on a Form 18A. The official fee that is uh, applicable for this Form 18A or request for expedited examination is INR 8000. This fee, however, would be INR 60,000 if the startup is a co-applicant with any other entity which is not a natural person or a startup or a small entity or an educational institute which has the benefit of reduced fee. One thing that you need to understand is an examination doesn't happen unless and until the application is published. So in the event the application has not been published when you file the request for expedited examination you need to also file a request for early publication under rule 24A so that the application gets published and the application can then be examined examined under the expedited rule. So a request for early publication is filed under form 9 along with official fee of INR 2500 or 12500 if the startup is a co-applicant. So in the event the entity had already filed a patent application before being recognized as a startup and they also filed an, an ordinary uh, examination request then they have now been given the option of converting that to a request for expedited examination under rule 24C sub rule 2. 
So this request is also filed on form 18A and this is indicated in paragraph 2 of the form wherein you specify whether you are filing it under rule 24C sub rule 1 or whether you are filing it under rule 24C sub rule 2. So along with the request under rule 24C sub rule 2 what we are discussing now you need to also pay the balance fee which is due. So you may have paid fee for examination under rule 24B the ordinary examination fee which is 4000 rupees and now you want to convert it into an expedited examination for which the fee is 8000 so now you need to pay the balance fee of 4000 rupees so let us now see what is the procedure available for expedited examination rule 24c sub rule 5 provides that once you file the request for expedited examination the controller would refer that application for examination to the examiner and that is done as per the serial order of the receipt of the request so what this means is as soon as you file a request for expedited examination there is a list where all such requests are placed and the controller goes as per the serial order and then assigns each application in the order of when those requests for examinations were filed and the ex the application is then referred for examination to the respective examiners. So once the patent application is referred to the examiner, he makes a report of all the shortfalls in the patent application and this has to be done ordinarily within one month and it should not exceed two months from the date of reference of the patent application to the examiner for examination. So once the examiner makes his report, he passes it on to the controller who has to dispose of that report. So in a way, he has to decide what needs to be done with that report under Rule 24C, Sub Rule 7. If the controller feels that an examination report needs to be issued or whatever are the objections need to be conveyed to the applicant, he issues an examination report within 15 days of the disposal of the report. And this is done under Rule 24C, Sub Rule 8. So once an examination report has been issued, the applicant gets time to respond to that. He prepares a response to all the objections that have been raised by the by the controller in the examination report and a response needs to be filed at the patent office. So rule 24C sub rule 10 provides that the time for putting the application in order for grant is provided under section 21 and that is six months from the date of the issuance of the first examination report. This six months period is extendable by another three months when a request is filed on form 4 along with a fee which is INR 2000 if the startup is the only applicant or it is INR 10,000 for an application where the startup is a co-applicant with some other entity which is not a natural person or a small entity or a startup or an educational institute as I had told you earlier. So if you would notice the time for putting the application in order for grant is same as that for a regular examination process. So there is no change in the timelines in respect of when the application can be put in order for grant and by putting an application in order for grant what is meant is that you satisfy all the objections that have been raised by the controller so you reply to that so in a way the response that you filed is is the process of putting the application in order for grant so along with the response you also request for a hearing in the event if there are any outstanding objections you ask the controller to provide you with an opportunity of being heard so as to put across your case so if such a request has been made in the response then the controller would appoint a hearing under rule 28 and no fee or form is required for uh, attending the hearing or for appointing that hearing so while the time for putting an application in order for grant is same as that for the normal examination process but the amended patent rules provide that the there are strict timelines for disposal of the application which enter through the expedited examination route and this is provided under rule 24c sub rule 12 which provides that the controller needs to dispose of the application either within three months of applicant's response to the first examination report or within three months of the expiry of time period under section 21. So if the applicant filed a response to the examination report today, the controller would have to dispose of the application, give a final decision on that within three months of today. Or else suppose that the time for putting the application in order for grant expired today, then the controller would get three months from today to dispose of the application. So by disposing of what is meant is the controller looks into what are the responses that have been filed and what were the arguments that were provided under the hearing and whether, whether the patent application satisfies the criteria under the Patents Act so as to be proceeded towards grant and based on that he disposes of that application by proceeding it towards grant or else if he feels that no patent should be granted then he would pass a reasoned order rejecting the patent application.
So, I, as I had mentioned earlier, there are some other entities also to which the provisions of expedited examination are available. So, let us now see what are these those entities who can also request for an expedited examination under the amended patent rules. So, Rule 24C, Sub Rule 1 provides that the benefits of expedited examination provisions are also available to any applicant who selects India as the International Search Authority or the International Preliminary Examination Authority in the corresponding PCT application. Then, the benefit is also available to a small entity or else if the applicant is a female or if there are more than one applicant then one of the applicants is a female also the benefits could be claimed by any government departments or any institution that is owned or controlled or wholly or substantially financed by the government or else any government company which is defined under section 2 subsection 45 of the companies act so very briefly a government company is one where more than 51 percent or around 51 percent of the capital share is held by the government. Finally, if there are some special arrangements that have been made out between the Indian Patent Office and any foreign patent office in relation to examination or treatment of patent applications, then such patent applications could also be eligible for expedited examination. So, sometimes there are arrangements that happen between different patent offices so as to they have a coordinated and effective uh, examination process. Maybe if that is there between the Indian Patent Office and some foreign patent office, then that may also qualify under the benefits of expedited examination. So, let us now see what are the questions that have been asked in in the previous year's question papers. So, this is a recent provision. So, I could find the 2016 paper had a question and it was a very direct question which said that write a short note on the benefits provided for startups and small entities under the patent rules. So, earlier small entities had a different, different fee structure that was available to them but now all of them have been clubbed together along with the startups. So, you can write about about the provisions that we have discussed so far and that is applicable for small entities as well. Again, 2018 paper 2 also had a similar question, a direct question which required you to answer about the expedited examination process and what are, are the provisions related to small entities and startups. So now, whatever we have discussed so far, all that would qualify as an answer. So looking at this trend, let me make a guesswork of what would be the expected questions in the 2022 question paper. Probably there could be questions related to the provisions that are now being made available for educational institutes as well as the government departments like we discussed right now. So, these are newly added provisions and thus a question could come on that. Further, there could be a question requiring you to advise on a hypothetical situation pertaining to startups or maybe educational institutes. So, they'll make a situation and ask you to apply the various rules available under the patent rules for startups or maybe educational institutes and answer that. Again, there could be a question related to an advice to be given to a hypothetical entity regarding expediting examination or maybe obtaining a patent expeditiously. So, they may not ask you a direct question or they may ask you to advise regarding how you can expedite examination or maybe obtain the patent in an expeditious manner. So, this is all about startups and the provisions available for expediting examination under the patent rules. This is a small topic but I believe this is very important topic and you may expect at least one question on, on these provisions. So, if you have liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you get regular updates regarding all other videos that I'll be posting regarding different provisions of the Patents Act and how to answer the questions in uh, patent agent examination. If you have any particular questions, then drop them in the comments box and I'll be happy to answer those. If you have any suggestions regarding topics that need to be covered, please again drop those in the comments box and I'll be happy to take them up. With this, I end my talk. Thank you very much.